Grab a dictionary and look up the word change, and you'll see some troubling associations. Change can result in uncertainty, instability, and chaos, things that aren't always associated with success. So how do you keep innovating without spiraling out of control? Change management models can introduce order back into the equation. Let's explore these models and examine five of the most common ones. Change management models are frameworks for driving and understanding organizational change. Multiple models exist, all with different purposes and functions. For example, some models help businesses decide what to change. Others guide organizations through the implementation process, and some help companies recognize and respond to their employees' emotional reactions. Following a change management model leaves fewer things up to chance. A model can help you set realistic expectations and guide you through reliable steps. The easiest way to make sense of this concept is to explore some popular frameworks. Let's break down five fundamental models and how they work. First is the McKinsey 7S model, which identifies seven elements that companies must align when planning for and implementing change. The elements are split into two categories. We begin with hard S's, which are concrete. First, strategy refers to your company's goals and business plan. Structure covers how departments and teams are organized. And systems are your company's procedures and rules. Next, the McKinsey model looks at soft S's, which are more subjective. The list begins with shared values, the things that matter most to your company and teams. Next is style, how are things done? Then there's your staff, the people doing the work. Finally, what are employees' skills and talents? The McKinsey model sheds light on company weak spots to help determine what needs to change. This model can also help ensure that your organization stays aligned throughout the process. If you need implementation help, try Lewin's three-step model. This strategy breaks change into three stages. First, you must unfreeze the status quo and get everyone ready for the transition. Next, you put the proposed change into practice, allowing employees to learn, make mistakes, and adjust. Finally, the organization locks the change into place for the refreeze stage. The old way of doing things is officially out. Overall, Lewin's model helps organizations communicate their plan, implement that change, and make the transition stick by outlining what to expect and do during each stage. If you're hoping for a more people-focused approach, consider Cotter's eight-step model. Begin by creating a sense of urgency. Then, build a core coalition to drive the proposed change forward. Next, create a strategy around how things will be done differently and form a strategic vision. With that in place, get everyone on the same page by communicating the vision. And then, Remove barriers by identifying obstacles to the change. Once the change is deployed, you can focus on generating short-term wins. To sustain acceleration, analyze what is and isn't working and make adjustments. Finally, you institute the change as an integral part of the workplace culture. Through strategic planning and gradual implementation, Cotter's model creates a sense of urgency and prepares employees for change helping them become more receptive to upcoming transitions. If you want to take the people-focused approach further, consider the Kubler-Ross model, which is split into five emotional, nonlinear stages. The first stage is denial, a refusal to believe the change is happening. Next is anger, when employees are hostile toward the change. When they accept the change's inevitability, employees move into the bargaining stage. If employees feel like they don't have control, they may enter a state of depression. Finally, once employees resign to the change, they've reached acceptance of the new normal. Given its focus on emotions, the Kubler-Ross model is best for companies hoping to empathize with employees and respond to their emotions appropriately. The last strategy we'll consider is the Satir model, which predicts and tracks how emotions impact performance in five steps. First is the late status quo, which refers to life before change. Employees feel comfortable and performance is fairly consistent. Next, a change is introduced. 
employees may resist the change, resulting in a sudden performance drop. When the change is implemented, chaos ensues. Companies can expect performance to decline as employees may feel confused and anxious. Over time, employees adjust and enter the integration stage. Performance improves for the first time since the change was introduced. Finally, the change becomes the new status quo. If all goes according to plan, performance reaches its highest level yet. While the Satir model doesn't affect employee performance, it does help set realistic expectations. Plus, it makes tracking performance easier. Change is unstable, but you don't need to go it alone. Change management models can help you through shaky times, giving you a clear roadmap to plot expectations and action steps. By taking advantage of change management models, you can chart a course for success in your next change process.